I am continuing my series on working through these very interesting uh, problems on Caltech's website for exercises that go along with the Feynman lecture series. So I've, I've, I'm working through these in order. Uh, I've done all of those, that one, that one, that one, someone that's bobbing on an incline. Uh, okay, so in, in my, I will link the website down below. You should go check out the, the problems. They do have solutions. I've not looked at the solutions. I've not looked at the problem. Um, so I'm just kind of working through them uh, on the fly. And that's how I like to do it. It's fun that way, right? Okay, so, and also, I don't know if you notice, if you can tell the difference, I do have a new camera. I'm actually using my uh, iPhone. I'm not sure if this is giving something weird right there. It's like a weird. Okay, well, if I'm, I'm still working on it. Okay, so let's get to the problem. Okay, this one's called bobbin on an incline. A bobbin. So I guess that's like a sewing bobbin, like a needle and thread type bobbin. So it's a, a cylinder with a, a disc around it, so that so that you can wrap the string around. Has a mass of okay. It's not a it's not a sewing bobbin. It's three kilograms, so it's like ginormous. It's a ginormous bobbin. Uh, three kilogram. This whole thing is three kilograms, with a central cylinder of radius five centimeters. Well, that's that's pretty big. So this is uh, 0.05 meters. Uh, the two end plates have a radius of 6 meters, so this is 0 0.06 meters, uh, placed on a slotted incline. I guess that just means it doesn't, I'm not sure about that. Um, on which it will roll but not slip and has a mass of 4 point, oh, a mass of 4.5 kilograms suspended from the quartz. So this is 4.5 kilograms wound around the bobbin and observe this static equilibrium what's the angle of tilt so uh when we see static equilibrium static equilibrium uh, we should immediately think about this following two equations should be true uh, f net equals zero the total force has to be zero and then torque net about some point i'll put this say some of the torque about some point is also zero now we're in a, this is a two dimensional problem. So I can actually write this as a scale. I can do the torques about the Z axis coming out of the board. And so I'm actually gonna, I, should, I guess I should pick this point right here as point O. But you do have to pick a point to add about the torques. So this is probably gonna be a torque problem. Um, so let's just see if we can um, first, I'm gonna draw the forces acting on this uh, and then I, on the bobbin, and then I will draw a free body diagram and then we can do the torques too, and let's just start writing down some equations. Okay, so the number one thing is uh, what forces are acting on this bobbin. Number one is the gravitational force. So that acts at the center of mass. I'll draw it right there, even though that's not the, it gets a little messy, MG. Uh, actually, that's capital M. Let's call this MH there. I just want to call it M. Uh, and then what are the forces acting on? Well, there's a, another, the contact forces are friction and the normal force. So there are two forces acting on this due to this, uh, interaction right here. First of all, there's a normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface. My thing's going to get messy. That's in. And then there's a friction force. So th if this is, oh boy, does the friction, does it want to slide down or up the incline? I don't even know. Because the friction wants to make it not slide. Now, does it want to slide down? I think it wants to slide down. It could want to slide up, right? Because if this is really heavy, then it would actually roll off, I think. But let's assume that it's sliding down. If we're wrong, I think we'll get a negative number. So let's say it's going to slide down that way. So the friction force would be this way. Now, for these two, it is important about where I put those forces. Oh, and then finally, we have this tension. And so here I have uh, tension and MHG pulling down, and these, if this is at rest, then the tension would be equal to the weight of that. And I, I want to make sure that that's clear, right? Because we're not saying that this is the weight of the mass pulling on that. It's actually the tension. But since it's the same tension, the same string, and I assume it's a massless string, then the tension up here pulling down on the bobbin is the same as the tension pulling up. So I actually, in a sense, this is the weight pulling down. Okay. So I have 
the gravitational force, the normal force, the friction force, and the tension force acting on there. And all those have to add up to zero in both the x and y directions, and the torque has to be zero. So let's redraw that picture and start with the forces. Now you'll notice here that uh, the distance from the tension to the point of rotation, which I'm going to pick this as the point of rotation, which I'm not sure that I have to. I could pick this as a point. Huh. Well, that might be complicated. I think it might be easier to pick this. So this distance is not the same as the distance for the friction. Okay. Okay, so let's just redraw the picture real quick. So I have that, I have that, I have the gravitational force. This is the angle, what do they call that? Theta. Theta. I'm going to draw it big. N, mg, f friction. And then, it would, that was straight down, right? It was straight down. Yeah. Straight down right there. T. That's a terrible picture. And that's a vector. Okay, so let's do F net X. What are the forces acting in the X direction? So the first thing, I guess, is what, what direction is X direction, which direction is the Y direction. Um, I'm actually going to do this. I don't know if that's the right thing, but I'm going to call this the X direction and that the Y direction. We often do that with inclined planes, and it seems to work out fine. Uh, but that way, the normal force is in the Y direction, the friction force is in the X direction. So this, we'll call that F, F, and now that's the magnitude, that's the X component of the friction force, right? It's no longer a vector. What are the forces we have in the X direction? Well, I have uh, a component of the weight, and so one of the tricks with inclined planes is if this is the angle theta, then that is the angle theta too. So this is going to be the x component is this part of that triangle. So this is going to be uh, minus mg sine theta. Sine theta is the x component of the gravitational force. And then tension also is pointing in that same direction. Same direction as, as the weight. So it's, it's going to be uh, minus m h g sine theta. Uh, any other force in that direction? So that one, that one, that one. Okay, that's it. And that's equal to zero. And then you'll see something nice here. I can say f f minus m plus m h g sine theta equals zero. That's pretty nice. Okay. Now the y direction, f net y. And you'll notice here, it's not, I, I don't know how to find theta, right? The goal is to find theta. I'm just writing some equations and hopefully I'll get to the point where I can find theta. That's a dash y. Okay, so in the y direction this way, I have the normal force and then I have a component of the weight of the bob and that's gonna be minus mg cosine theta and then a component of the, um, the tension, which is going to be minus mhg cosine theta. So this becomes n minus m plus mhg cosine theta equals zero. Oh, where's the tension? That is the tension. Yep. I wonder if I could have, if I wonder if I could even solve for theta already. Let's see, because I actually do know uh, another equation. So I have this equation. I have this equation, and I know that if this is the usual friction, if, oh, wait, does it say it's about to slip, or do I not know the friction force? Let's see. It will not slip. Okay, so here is, you cannot use this. The, the key would be to say, oh, friction force equals the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Well, that's not true. In fact, the the friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And so only at the point where it's about to slip would you be able to be able to find 
to make this connection. So we don't know that. If you look back up here, I don't know the friction force, I don't know theta, and I don't know the normal force. So I have three equations, three unknowns. I cannot solve it. If I if I had a second one in uh, this third one in there where that where I could set that equal, I could, but I don't. So that means I need the torque equation. So I can say torque net O, which is the net torque about the point O is zero. Okay, so let's look over here. I'm gonna look at my other picture because it's a little bit better. So what forces exert a torque about this? Well, the normal force does not, right? Because the torque is uh, R cross F. And so if this is R this way and the normal force is that way, then they are 180 degrees apart and there is no torque. There's the R cross F is zero vector. So there's no torque between these two for this one. It passes through the rotation point. And the same for gravity. Gravity passes through the rotation point, so it doesn't exert a torque. That means we only have the tension and the friction force. So uh, the friction force is going to, and they're both perpendicular to their radiuses, so that's pretty good. So let's see, that one, the little one's R. Okay, so this is going to be, we'll call uh, counterclockwise torque would be by friction positive and the other one negative. So I get friction force times big R minus mhg little r equals zero. So that's actually a pretty nice equation right there because I can take this and solve for f and plug it in up here. So this is going to be f friction r equals mgr f friction equals mgr over r and now I can plug that in up here and actually I should be able to solve, I don't even need that equation. I can solve this one for theta. So let's do that. M G R over R minus M plus M H G sine theta equals zero. So I get M G R over R equals M plus M H G sine theta. And now I can divide both sides and solve for sine theta. New piece of paper. So I get sine theta is equal to m, the g's cancel, m r over r over uh, 1 over m plus m h. Now notice right here that meters, meters cancels, kilograms, kilograms. So I have a unitless quantity that's pretty good. Uh, and then so theta would just be the inverse sign of m r over r m plus h. Um, let's just check. I guess let's put it in my calculator. Okay, so on clear I am in degrees, so this is going to be the answer in degrees. So I'm going to say inverse sine, I'm not great with calculators, uh, m, which is, I forgot, m is 3 times little r, 0 0.05, divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses, r, which is 0 0.06 times, uh, well, I can just add that. Well, I could have done added that in my head. Uh, it is 3 and 4.5, so 3 and 4.5 is 7.5, close parentheses, close parentheses. Is that adding one more? Okay, so this gives 19.5 degrees. Okay, so I think that's it. I, I'm kind of surprised that I didn't actually have to find the normal force or an expression for the normal force, but I'm also kind of happy. So it's a good, you know, that's why you set these up. That's why you write out these equations. You never know what you're going to need and what you're not going to need. So the best thing is to just to, to write everything else you need. Um, question, am I getting a little, like, shakiness from my light, I wonder? I thought I was seeing some, but it looks okay. Right there, see? The shadow. 
So from this light, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's the power supply. Okay, I'll check on that. Okay, I'll uh, post a playlist of all my solutions so far, a link to the website with all the questions and their solutions too, which I did not look at. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.